Getting a high paying job is an amazing feeling at first. You feel like you're on top of the world now because now you can afford that car that you've been wanting. Now you can afford to go on those vacations of your dreams. Now you can afford to live in a nicer neighborhood. You feel on top of the world because you know you've worked so hard to get here and the work paid off and now you're gonna have the status, you're gonna have the money, you're gonna have the bonuses, and you're gonna have opportunities that you've never had before in your life. And most importantly, you'll be able to finally give back to your family. Now imagine this, except you're 21. That was me. Now I know this all sounds very positive, but I just wanna share my experience with you because I quickly found that this was not the life that I wanted and that the money definitely did come at a price. My first high paying job was literally the worst thing that's ever happened to me and it lasted one full year and nine months. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it straight up scarred me and it mentally affected me for several months even after I had already left and went to work somewhere else. What's up, man? My name's Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so that you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. I talk about saving money, budgeting money, getting out of debt, increasing your income, and I give my own personal stories to serve as a motivation to you to continuously better yourself so that you can live a better life. Let's get into the video. So at the age of 21, I accepted my very first high paying job. And I know that's a really vague thing to say because what is a high paying job, right? Well, just to put it into perspective, my job gave me $65,000 per year and that was base pay. That was purely just base pay. But because of overtime, I was able to make my base pay within the first seven months of me working. So yeah, that's a lot of money for a 21 year old. Again, that sounds really good, but bro, I'm telling you, one minute I was on top of the world, the next it was like in the blink of an eye, my entire reality changed and my world came crashing down. Now you're probably wondering, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, how did you even get to the point of making that much money at the age of 21? Good question. So this is kind of a weird story, but basically I went to school for engineering and three years into my schooling, I had an engineering internship which somehow turned into a management internship. And because I did so well, the same company that I had the internship at, they offered me a full-time job right out of college. And this company happens to be one of the biggest manufacturers in the world. And this is for a management position. So that's pretty much why I made what I made when I first got out of college. But the funny thing is, even though I worked super hard in college, kept a super high GPA, worked ridiculously hard on projects and studying and speeches and all of this good stuff just to get a degree in order to get a high paying job, I found out that the job that I was hired for right out of college didn't even require a college degree. It's even known as one of the highest paying jobs that does not require a college degree. But do you think I cared about that? I was just happy to get a job that paid well, period. Cause I had already heard all the horror stories about paying all this money to go to college and then having absolutely nothing to show for it afterwards, having one to two years of being jobless after college. I didn't want that reality. So I was very grateful that I got a job outside of college. Just in case you're curious as to what position that was, it's called a first line supervisor, also known as an area manager. But even though the job paid very well, it came at a price. So here's exactly what made a seemingly great opportunity into a horrible experience. There are actually three things. So for one, the odds were automatically stacked up against me from day one because of how young I was. Now I had no idea about this, but when you're really young and you take on a position of authority, especially in a really high volume manufacturing type of a workplace, there is some resistance. Now, not all places are like this, but where I worked at, Oh, there was all kinds of resistance. I mean, even my peers had resistance because I was so young and the people who reported to me had a ton of resistance. There were like 50 something of them and, and none of them were having the fact that I was so young and I was their boss. So I was fighting an uphill battle from the very start. And look, like people were not shy about how they felt about me being a young leader. I mean, people would literally come up to me and say stuff like, oh, I hear you're only 21. Boy, I got underwear that's older than you. What you doing here? Had people walk up to me, shaking their heads, saying, you're too young. I'll give you six months. You're not gonna last six months in here. It's real out here. Y'all already know I got this one. You're just a baby. The only reason you even got this job is because of that fancy education of yours. But that don't mean nothing over here though. That is word for word what they said. That is word for word how they speak. And I have it memorized because I was told every single day these same exact things 
and it's embedded in my mind now. But you know, I've always been a type of a person who has a good amount of confidence in myself and I'm a headstrong person, so I really didn't let all of that stuff affect me. But like I just said, these things were said to me on a daily basis, whether it was from one of my peers or one of the people who works for me or even my bosses. No matter who I talked to, no matter where I went within that entire 2.2 million square foot facility, there was a stigma attached to me, no matter what. And that stigma said, he's young. He doesn't know anything about leadership. That stigma said, he's too young. He can't handle all this responsibility. And that's what people saw when they saw me, despite knowing anything about me. Like there was such a blatant lack of respect just because of the fact that I was young. Pretty much any negative stereotype that's associated with young people in general just so happened to get attached to me. What they saw was a gullible, incompetent, power hungry kid who had zero common sense and only book smarts. And I know this because this is what I was told several times on a daily basis. <laughs> And you know the crazy thing, all this time I was so happy to take on a position, I was so excited, I was so fired up about this whole thing, I was happy to have new challenges in my life, being able to lead a large team of people at such a young age, like it just felt so good because not a lot of people can say that. I was the youngest manager in that entire plant and I was so proud of that. I was really thrown off guard by the ageism that was going on. Ageism is a real thing, and I, I didn't know that, but there was a whole stigma about me just because of the fact that I was young. And over time, that really started to hurt me. It really started to weigh on, on me and on my spirit because when you get told that every single day, like without any wavering, without any hesitation, without any remorse for anything, it, and it comes from all kinds of levels, people under you, people at your level, people above you. When that's constantly being thrown in your face, over time, that starts to weigh on you. And over time, you start to feel a certain way about it. And then it just, and, and then you just get irritated. And that's exactly what I was going through. And look, here's the icing on the cake though. My bosses saw me and they were like, you know what? He's young. He's available anytime we need him. And that leads me to my next point, bro. I was way overworked. I wasn't even a month in before my schedule completely hit the fan. So my original schedule was a 2-3-2 schedule, which means you basically work for two days for 12 hours, then you're off for two days, then you work for three days, and then you're off for three days, and the pattern goes just like that. So basically it works out to where you're off for three to four days every single week. But the only reason the schedule is like that is because you work so many hours within one day. Well, that schedule didn't exist in my world because I worked so much that I felt like I literally lived there. And when I say I felt like I lived there, it was because I worked every single day for at least 12 hours every single day. My schedule actually got like this because one of my coworkers sadly passed away and I had to cover my shift and his shift as a manager. Now keep in mind, this was me by myself with no days off, working a minimum of 12 hours every single day. So not only was I working a physically and mentally demanding job every single day, but I had to lead a team of people who have just lost someone who was actually dear to them. That was literally the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. Not only was I learning the machines in the process of the area that I was in charge of, I was also learning the people and their personalities. I was learning how to lead, but what I really had to learn was how to lead myself through this chaos because it was a very trying time for me as well. I mean, sure, like the money was great and everything. I got tons of overtime, but it cost me physically, mentally, and spiritually. To be honest, this really weighed heavy on my sanity. And on top of all of that, I was underappreciated in addition to being overworked. I was there so much that I, I was just taken for granted. Like I was expected to be there every single day. I was expected to have all kinds of endless energy every single day. I was expected to perform at my 100% best despite the fact that I was only getting three to four hours of sleep every single night because of the fact that I worked every day for a minimum of 12 hours, which really was more like 14 to 16 hours because if you figure you come in early, you leave late as a leader, right? So I was going through it, man. I was, I was going through it. And when you mix being young on top of that, people wanted to just test me for no reason, like at the worst possible time. Like I'm already going through a plethora of tests within my own life and within, within work and everything, learning all these things at once, dealing with all the problems at once. And then you have people coming up to you trying to test you. That's what I was going through. I had people walking up to me, just seeing how far they could go, just seeing how serious and tough I was. 
seeing what line they couldn't cross, you know, what they can get away with. It was a madhouse in there. I mean, people would disappear from their work areas for hours at a time. People would literally fight each other like fist fights. People would flat out refuse to do their jobs. And one time, everyone even got together in the entire building and proceeded to walk out to go on a strike. Not kidding. This actually happened. But on top of this, I had my own real life struggles going on. I had real life problems happening. I had deaths in the family. I was missing weddings. And at the time, I was going through a bad breakup with the girl that I had been dating for the past three years at the time. Like, my life wasn't butterflies and rainbows outside of work. Like, it was bad on top of bad. There was no escape from anything it felt like. What I'm saying is, bro... Life is going to happen and literally nobody is going to care. They don't care what you got going on. They don't care where are you from. It's, it's life. So if that paints the picture of you for how I was doing mentally during this time, yeah, I was I was beyond drained. And physically, I, I was losing weight. I'm going to post a video real quick of, you know, around that time frame when I was making my first few videos, you'll see my face was sunken in. You know what I'm saying? I, I've always had a, a good build on me. I was losing muscle mass. I was losing weight because I wasn't eating. I wasn't replenishing my energy like I should have. I wasn't resting like I should have because I was just work, 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 work. And the correlation is when you're mentally drained, eventually it's going to catch up with you physically. And that is something that I could have only learned from experience because people can tell you that all day. You know, but until you experience it, you really, that's when you really understand it. I was restless, man. Like, I literally had chaos around me at all times. There was, like, a new storm every single day, but that storm was never the same one, so I could never really prepare for it. There was always something going on. I mean, things got crazy. And I was anxious all the time because I saw firsthand how cutthroat that company actually was because again, I worked every single day so I saw everything that got down. I watched so many of my peers get walked out of the facility. I've seen so many of my peers get written up, even fired, you know what I mean? Like I saw these things happen and these weren't just like some average Joe type of people. These were very highly skilled intellectual people who these things were just happening to. They didn't care that they had a family. They didn't care where they were from. That's the message I wanna to send to you. I, I realized that no matter how high paying the job is, no matter how important you may feel, everybody is disposable. And that is reality in every single company. Every company ain't like the company I work for now. Every company isn't going to be cutthroat or mean. There's companies out there like the one that I work for now that are, that are brilliant, that really care about their people. But I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter who you are, what position you hold. Everybody, and I mean everybody, is disposable. It's one of those harsh truths I had to learn. And, you know, fortunately, I was protected and, and nothing like that ended up happening to me. But I saw it happen and it freaked me out, man. But I guess it was a good thing it freaked me out because it really changed my perspective about jobs in general. Like it made me realize, you know, this guy who just got fired, this guy who just got suspended, they've been putting their hearts and souls into this place for the past 10, 20 years. And it happened to them. So what makes me exempt from that? absolutely nothing. And what I got from it is that most people just don't care. I had like maybe a handful. I can I can count on one hand how many people truly cared about me within that plant and cared about my success and all that stuff. But everyone else no one really cared. They don't they don't care who you are, what your ambitions are. They don't care where you're from. They don't care if you're from the UK, if you're from Japan, if you're from America. They don't care if you're from Planet Namek. They don't care because, you know, everybody has their own agenda. Everybody wants to look good for themselves. Everybody wants to move up and stay out of trouble. It's just, you know, it, it was just cutthroat over there. That's all I'm saying. Now, it's not, this isn't your average work workplace, right? So obviously it's not going to be like this everywhere you work at. I'm just putting it into perspective. Chasing that high salary is not always the answer. It sure wasn't the answer for me. And again, I'm just telling you this because when you shoot for that high paying job, these are some of the things that you might have to face because 
it's a high paying job for a reason. It's going to come with a certain stress level. It's going to come with a certain amount of adversity and conflict. It's going to come with challenges that you may not have seen coming. And I'm not saying your challenges are going to be anything like mine, but your challenges will be very unique to you. And these are things that you're going to want to look out for because there are people out there who will literally do what they can to make themselves look good at the expense of your livelihood. And to be perfectly honest with you, people have tried to do that with me. It didn't work. Not on your boy, not me, <laughs> but people tried. And the fact that they tried says a lot because they could have succeeded. But in all but in all seriousness and all honesty, like I did not feel secure at all. I felt like I could be fired at any given second. I felt like there were a lot of eyes on me. I felt very uncomfortable every single day. And I felt like I was under the spotlight just for no reason, just because of the things that I had going against me from the very start without me even getting a chance to make a real impression on anybody. Now, at first, all these things that were coming against me, I was like, okay, yo, whatever, like brush it off your shoulder type of thing. It's, it's all good. This is the job. I'm, I'm here to do a job. I'm not really worried about all the extra stuff. But it came a time when it weighed on me so much that I really got in a dark place about it. And to some extent, I was honestly terrified. I really was. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen because that place was just so unpredictable. And when you're young and you're just starting out and you're just trying to make it, you're just trying to get your life started. That's a very scary thing to deal with because I was living in another city. I was not living in the city that, you know, I was born and raised in and lived my whole entire life. And I was a couple hours away. I was paying my own rent. I was paying all my own bills. And I was, you know, I was on my own. And, and the thing that I absolutely refused to do was to move back home. So I just kept dealing with it. I just kept, I just kept going through. I just kept going with the pressure. It was such an immense amount of pressure on a daily basis that eventually I wasn't terrified anymore and the chaos just became normal. I kind of became numb to it and don't confuse that with a good thing because there's nothing good about being numb to certain experiences and sensations within your life. When you get numb, that's basically another way of saying you just really don't care anymore. Like, I don't care what happens, screw it. Anything can happen, this place can go on fire, basically is what you're saying when you say that you're numb to a chaotic experience. It just becomes so normal that you don't even feel a way about it anymore. I still did what I was supposed to do when I was there, but I just really, like nothing bothered me. Like people would still try. I mean, I, again, this lasted a full year and nine months. People would try me. I mean, like this was a really real experience for me. I mean, and my job got threatened several times. They were just empty threats. But nonetheless, I mean, you don't know what somebody's going to do when you see everybody else getting walked out. And then over, like I said, man, over time, I was just like, all right, do it. Because I knew I was doing the best I could and it just, it was never good enough. You know what I mean? I, I worked every day. Like, what else do you want from me? You know what I mean? So that type of stuff, like I said, this high paying job came at a price. I was killing it. I was making tons of money, but at what cost? You know what I mean? I didn't have no free time for myself. I barely had time to eat. Sometimes I would come home and literally just collapse. Sometimes I wouldn't even make it to my room. Like I would fall on the couch wake up a few hours later. You know what I'm saying? I just got into the motion, man. I, I became like a, a ghost of my formal self. Like I was literally just on autopilot at that point. I was just literally going through the motions every single day. Up, oh, yep, of course that happened. Oh, there's a fire? Yeah, of course. Oh, there's a flood? Of course. Oh, there's two people fighting in the break room? Of course. Oh, another dude got walked out today? Of course. You know what I'm saying? Oh, another operator disrespected me. Yeah, yeah, that happens every single day. What else you got? Oh, we have to evacuate the building. Okay. All right, of course. Everybody get out of here. Let's go. <laughs> one by one. I'm, every single thing I just named happened when I was there. I wasn't there that long. So, you know what I mean? Thing, things happen. It gets real. But look, though. I truthfully believe that this is one of the most valuable things I experienced in my life. As a matter of fact, I would even go as far as to say that it's invaluable because no book, no teacher, no person in the world could have ever prepared me for this. And because I chose to stick with this job for a full year and nine months and just go through the pressure and I, I literally took the path of the most resistance possible, it built me into a stronger person. Not everybody can deal with what I had to deal with. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody has different tolerance levels, but I'm just telling you because I had a relatively high tolerance level and I went through what I went through, 
I was able to take back some gems that I can now use to add value to you, give you those gems, tell you, you know, what to look out for. And, and again, this stuff may not ever happen to you. But generally speaking, when you take a job and the higher the salary goes, what I really want to point out to you is that's the more time you spend away from your family. Generally speaking, this isn't always the case, but generally that's how it is. The higher your salary is at work, that's the more time you have to spend outside of work doing work-related things. That, that's the more responsibility that you have. That's the more weight that you have on your shoulders. That's more time away from your family. That's more time away from your free time to build what you want to build. Going out with friends. Going to weddings. Going to funerals even. I mean, these were things that I missed out on doing so much of the time because I was at work all the time. And another key thing is some people live that exact reality that I just painted for you all the time for, for years, for 20, 30, 40 years and finish out their careers like that. I said, that ain't going to be me because you know what? Now I know exactly what I'm going to accept and what I'm not going to accept. And so I had to do something about it. And, you know, I don't blame a single soul for for what I went through because I chose that job. I hold myself accountable for every decision I make in life. And I think if I didn't make the decision to work there, I wouldn't be the man I am today. I wouldn't be the leader I am today. And I never would have gotten passionate and obsessed about personal finance because of the fact that I was freaked out about this job all the time and about losing it. I buckled down. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got knowledge on budgeting, saving, investing, you know, living frugally, all those things that can add up to wealth in the future. And now I can add value to others like you in terms of how to build that. In addition to sharing my own experiences, the value that I add to my own business or to businesses, organizations, is totally different than the caliber that I was at prior to going through those crazy experiences. So yeah, I know I know you watching this video, you're you're a young person. You have ambition to to go for a high paying job. You know, that was when I was 21. I'm 25 right now. You might be between the ages of 20 and 30. You might want that high paying job. I just want you to understand what you could be getting yourself into. This isn't to scare anybody or freak anybody out. This is just the reality of what could be if you take on a job that is super high paying. And something that I learned was, you know, aiming for these high ticket salaries, you know, that that's not always the answer. For some people, it works great. And that, that's OK. That's fine. That's awesome. For me, it made me think differently. It made me think I need to do something on my own accord. I need to have my own business going on. I need to add value to as many people as possible outside of work and monetize off of that and, and have my own gig going on. So I'm not just relying on one stream of income because businesses shut down every single day. Businesses fire and lay people off every single day. I'm not about to be a statistic straight up. And I know you don't want to be either. So this is just this is just advice. This is just, you know, my perspective. This is what I see through through my lens and everything. And I hope you really take away something from this video. But anyways, man, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances and control your life so that you can live life on your own terms. Thank you so much for watching.